Hello everyone, in today's tutorial what I want to do is I want to show you how to render um, substance files in Marmoset Toolbag. In this case I'm going to be using Marmoset Toolbag 4. So there are a few differences between Marmoset 4 and 3 when it comes to the rendering. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. If you are following using an older version, uh, this may not completely work or you may, some of the things may look different. Anyway, so the first thing you want to do is obviously go to Substance and have a Substance that you're going to export. Um, personally, I prefer to just do a right click on it and then just export as bitmaps. And I usually just export all the maps that are in the graph uh, and they're just going to export as um, you know, you can choose the file type. In my case, I'm just exporting as PNG, but typically that's uh, how I export them. And the, the size of the actual texture is uh, set in your project, which is usually, you know, 0, 0. In this case, I think I'm, I'm using 2048 in my starting um, inputs here. Alrighty, so I already exported mine, so I can... Uh, just start importing the, these into Marmoset. Now, first, what we need in Marmoset is obviously we need something, an object that we can apply our material to. And typically, I prefer to just use the same primitives uh, that you see in Substance, just because it just makes it easier and it's easy to just preview what the material looks like uh, on a sphere or a cylinder or a cube. So. Let's go back to Substance. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to do exactly, I want to use exactly the same primitives that are used uh, here in Substance. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to find where the files are actually located in our computer. So the easiest way I found to do this is here in the library section. Just gonna scroll down and I'm going to look for the HDRI environment. Um, mainly because I'm not really seeing the shapes here in the library. They're probably here somewhere, but I just find it easier to just go to the HDRI environments. And then on any of these, you can just do a right click. And here it shows you the location for this HDR. So let's go ahead and open that. Alrighty, so it brought us here. So here are all those uh, lighting scenarios essentially which you could technically also import uh, into Marmoset if you wanted to, if you want to keep the exact same lighting uh, conditions as uh, Substance. So here what I want to do is I'm going to go back one step, uh, one folder, and here you can see that there's a Shapes folder, and here is essentially where the shapes that are used in uh, Substance are located. So what I want to do is I'm going to want to uh, open these in Marmoset. So let me minimize Substance. And here I'm just going to drag this in. Typically I like the sphere, the cylinder, and the cube. Uh, you can try the other ones if you, if you want to as well. We can just drag this in. And I'm just going to close this window. Alright, so in Marmoset now, as you can see here we have the cylinder, uh, the, cylinder the cube, and the sphere. So I'm going to use the sphere mostly. In this video. Alrighty, so basically what we want to do now is apply our material to this. So that's pretty easy. You can either make a new one or you could even just use the default one. So let's go ahead and actually just use the default one because we don't need to make a new one. And what I'll do is I'm going to apply the normal map uh, first. So let's go ahead and do that. So in my output, I'm just going to open a normal map. Uh, depending on what settings you chose when you were making your normal map, you may have to flip Y. In my case, I don't have to because the normal map is already uh, the way it should be looking. Alright, so next thing is to add the albedo, albedo map. Uh, next, we need a... Let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to just leave it alone. Let's add the roughness. Uh, let's add a metallic. And in this case, I think I'm just going to import my occlusion as well. So you, so you can see here, this is what it does. It's a little strong, so I'm just going to reduce it. Also going to use it for the cavity as well. 
Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to tile this a bit more. Let's just choose two. So you can see this better. And the last thing we need is we need a displacement. So let's add the height. Let's click on displacement and add our height map. And now to increase this a little bit. Notice right now that the um, resolution for our height map is not really that good. Um, it's a really, you know, it's really low res. And we're going to deal with that a little bit later. If you are using an older version of uh, Marmoset, you can actually change the tessellation here. There should be an option. Uh, but in Marmoset 4, it's, uh, it's in a different location. So we're going to do that uh, later. Let's go ahead and just start to you know, mess with the lighting. So to rotate, just hold out shift uh, and then right, right mouse click and drag. So I think I want a different light here. So let's go ahead and go to sky. And when you go to sky, you have a few presets that you can choose from. And there are a lot of these HDRI images. And like I mentioned earlier, you could even import the ones from Substance, from that folder that uh, we looked at. All right, so here you can choose by double clicking on it. And as you can see, it kind of changes our um, lighting. So I'm gonna choose uh, this one, it's relatively um, neutral. Uh, but I recommend going through these and just looking for one that uh, makes your material look uh, pretty good. But obviously, just adding that, it's not going to make it look good. Uh, personally, one thing I like to do is I like to use three-point three, three point lighting. If you don't know what that is, basically means having a main light, a uh, skylight, and just like a backlight uh, that acts like a rim light for your object. So what I'm going to do here is to add a new light, it's pretty easy. You just click on the image, and it essentially adds a light. And uh, you can kind of rotate it around if you want to. But once you have added it, it also shows up here under the sky. And you should be able to also find it in the viewport. So if you press W, you can see that the light is here somewhere. If you press Ctrl U, it will show you the actual, um, the actual direction of the light. So this is a directional light, obviously. And you can change the type of light as well if you want to. So in this case, I'm just going to rotate this and uh, let's see here. I'm going to move it to the side a little bit. Let's increase the brightness. And I'm going to give it a little bit of color. So this is kind of like uh, my fill light in a sense. So my main light is the actual HDR. And then this is kind of like an extra layer or extra fill light. It's almost like a it's almost like a um, like a main light as well, but not quite. All right, there we go. Also, one thing I like to do is I like to change the background color. So I'm going to go to sky, and instead of using the actual ambient sky, I'm just going to choose the color. And uh, I think this color works relatively well. It's got a bit of blue, and our material is a warm color. Uh, warm meaning it's kind of like in the yellows, reds. Uh, so somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, cool color, like a blue, kind of complements this a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, rendering these things. Alrighty. And now what I want to do is I want to add a rim light to the back. Let's do that. Alright, so it's this one right here. I'm just going to press W and move this to the side. And for this one, I'm going to increase the... Uh, intensity quite a bit and here what I'm looking at is just to have a rim light this works great for separating the um, the background from the actual uh, model and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a blue a tiny bit may also look good if you duplicate it on this side so I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to add another rim light. So I'm just going to duplicate this. So Control D to duplicate a light. And I'm essentially going to 
rotate this on this side. Alright, and I'm gonna make this a warmer warmer color. Okay, then reduce this just a tiny bit. Alright, and I think I wanna have another fill light on the side here. So I'm going to duplicate my rim light. So control D. This is gonna be my another fill light. Just to add a bit of color variance to this. And this is gonna be a cool color. Alrighty, I think that looks pretty good. And I think that's pretty much all we need. Obviously you can uh, do more to this. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy with the number of lights. Uh, you won't, don't wanna exaggerate this too much. So I'm gonna press Control U so I don't see the uh, the actual lights. So I'm pretty much good here. And you can obviously rotate the light to see if maybe there's a better angle here that you like. All right, so pretty much now we are ready to just do a render. Obviously, like I mentioned, there's uh, the tessellation for the uh, height map is not really good right now. So in Marmot at 4, the setting for that is, let's see here, we have to do this in the actual mesh. And so if you click on the model itself, so sphere in this case, here what you want to do is you want to uh, increase the subdivision level. So let's go one by one. And we have to click on subdivide to actually see the difference. So that's not enough, so let's go to 3. And let's see here, maybe this is too much. So this is essentially adding more geometry to this. Maybe want to go to 4. Alright, I think 4 is usually good. I wouldn't recommend going too high because you know, your computer may just explode if you do that. If you have a, very, a really good computer, you can... Uh, now you can go a little bit higher if you want to. Alrighty, so here we go. So now we are ready to just render. You could also go to do render and if you wanted to you could enable ray tracing. So ray tracing pretty much it just makes the uh, kind of like the shadows and ambient, ambient areas just look a little bit nicer. Let's go ahead and turn it on and off. You can see here. And you can also change some of the settings with, uh, you know, with the uh, reflection intensity, the uh, actual diffuse intensity as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this. So typically how I render is I just go to, um, here I just set a, a location for my render. I like to increase my render to at least close to 4K or um, for 2K, I like the 2K personally, and I like the DGA, but the file type, it doesn't ma uh, matter too much, as long as you can, uh, you know, you can share it somewhere, or if you want to edit that in Photoshop or something like that. And you can choose if you want transparency, so if you want the actual model separate from the background, uh, you can do that. And you can choose the samples, which is... Uh, how the quality of the actual image personally i like to set it to 512 and then you can just render the image and it's going to render whatever camera you have set here so obviously you can make more than one camera as well so yeah that's pretty much it for this and if you want to do something like a turntable which i always do uh, you, you can do that by just clicking on the sphere go to scene add object and then just click turntable and that pretty much does it for you. All you have to do is go to Animate and then just hit the Play button. Uh, you may have to change some settings like right now. It's a little bit too fast. Uh, but you can change the speed here. And you could also animate things like the lights. And do that as well. Uh, for turntables, typically I just render the actual screen. Uh, it's not the highest um, fidelity because you're recording the actual screen. Uh, which is not, when you hit play, the um, ray tracing, it's turned off. As you can see here, once I hit play, it just disables uh, ray tracing. So if you wanted to actually 
render that, you will have to go to render and instead of render image, it would render an MP4. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, let me know if this works for you or if there's anything that didn't make sense or that uh, wasn't clear. Uh, but yeah, this is it for this tutorial. I hopefully see you in a future video. You see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.